Okay, everybody. Part three, the world to come. Let's look at why we thought uh, Brave New World, Gattaca, 200, 3%, were all dystopian futures, which is really funny because everybody likes to use the word utopia and everybody likes to use the word dystopian. And I think I can only have met five people who've actually read the book Utopia in my life. Not counting myself. It's a book. Read it. Utopia. It's science fiction from the 15th century written by Sir Thomas More. It's actually kind of fun. Read what Utopia said. We use the word all the time, so you might as well know where the hell it came from. You don't just want to be a dumbass, do you? Anyways, we are looking at, I'm not talking about massive genetic manipulation, no, but you know, why was Gattaca considered a dystopian future? I don't know. I mean, this was an incredibly focused story. This was about a guy who wanted to be an astronaut but couldn't make the health check. And we looked at that, and oh my God, it's such an unfair and crazy world. We know nothing about that world. We know nothing about really what he could have done if he wanted to live an average life. Let me ask you something. How many people do you personally know who want to be and are training to be astronauts? How many? I'm betting not that many. How many have you even known who wanted to attempt it over the age of five? This was a guy who wanted to be an astronaut. To create an allegory of his life, uh, you, to the modern world, you would have to say, let's find a person with acute asthma that wants to get into the space program. What do you mean? If you have acute asthma, you're not getting into the space program for health reasons. Okay, so now we're gonna make a story. Modern day Gattaca. Here is a guy, the protagonist. He has acute asthma and he's going to fake his personnel and his medical records all to get into the space program to hide his condition and uh, 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 his check the health checkups and everything like that just to show that a person with acute asthma can get into space and all those medical checks are just so biased and unfair and discriminatory those sons of bitches yeah that's what really Gattaca says but <laughs> We, don't, we really know very little about the actual world itself. It doesn't really talk about that. It certainly doesn't talk about what life would be like if he just wanted to just live. Like, hey, let's redo Gattaca, but this time he wants to be a school teacher. I bet it wouldn't be as traumatic. And, and so far that society really doesn't look so bad. Next, um, the 200 was fun. The 200 was fun because it makes a fantastic, although sub point about how the first worlders, I'm going to call it first worlders, the countries like that, want to preserve their way of living at all costs. Building bunkers and whatnots. Um, and they think this is, this is the, a survival technique. But you remember how the 200, and you can go watch this show on Netflix again if you want, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, sorry. 
uh, they, they came across the people in the bunker, right? Who froze in their world. The funny thing about the 200 is they lived in orbit for these generations and they thought they didn't know they had changed. You know, they went down to the surface and they're like, hey, I don't see any radiation. It's not, it's, it's, it's really not bad down here. It was bad down there. It's just that being exposed to solar radiation for so long, they had adapted. They now lived on 20% of the food intake of a person uh, who, from the past and could survive radiation levels five times higher than the person of the past. So those idiots uh, 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 the first worlders, the one percenters who locked themselves in a bunker, they come out, they drop dead like flies because they thought their answer was putting themselves in a time capsule and waiting to see if the world would return back to the way it was when they were living in it. Wrong! <laughs> no, that didn't work. The world just kept on changing. And they step outside, they die. The people who lived up in orbit, they, not knowing it, adapted and now can live in the environment comfortably. So could the people who were not allowed in the bunkers. So for all those people who want to be survivalists or you know what, take a look on Google. Google the amount of people in Silicon Valley, all these tech whizzes, who spend a percentage of their capital building underground bunkers and preparing for what they see as the end. Search this. It's not a joke. It's like a freaking hobby. Building underground bunkers is an entire industry, not just for the survivalist nut, but for anybody who has the spare capital uh, to do it. Luxury bunkers. It's true. Search it. Whole, un not cities, but communities. It's freaking nuts. At least that tells you that people know what's happening now is just the beginning of the end. All of the signs are there. But apparently they didn't watch 200 because they think locking themselves underground is the way I guess to see it through to the other side there is no other side of the end <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the end if there was another side if you just had to turtle in the ground for a bit until you come out and the world that you knew returned then it wouldn't be the end it would be the pause <laughs> yeah that was funny laugh now um, so yeah, I don't really give a crap about politics because the whole thing is fantasy. If you want to know what do I think about Trump's idea, I don't care. Um, you want to go just by the United States, the founding fathers, who was it? Was it Thomas Jefferson that said the tree of liberty from time to time must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants? It is its natural Manure. I'm surprised it got 300 years. The founding fathers knew that there is no uncorruptible government. Freedom isn't free. And, my favorite quote, anger gets shit done. So all I see right now is people getting angrier on both sides. Angrier. Keep going. As Bertrand Russell says, get rid of these uh, pressure releases. You know, the, 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 the moderates or the establishment people, they keep on wanting to put these pressure releases into society, just to let off enough steam, 
to keep things going a little bit longer and not let the whole thing explode. Let it blow up. That's the only way to get real change one way or another. All of the safeguards of the world, all of the safeguards that societies, no matter how well-meaning, have put into place to try to error correct um, the course of society has been corrupted by those who found such error corrections would interfere with their businesses or politics. And their entire lives were spent disconnecting the fire alarms, right? Getting rid of the error correct systems, knocking out the sprinklers to make sure that if there was a fire, they wouldn't get their shit wet. That's what they were worried about. Hey, if that sprinkler goes off, my computer gets wet. So you know what the good idea is? Break the sprinkler. That's what we need to do to protect my computer. But what if there's a fire? Who gives a fuck if there's a fire? I need to protect my computer. And that's the modern world in a nutshell. People who think that there could never be a fire have spent the last 40 years breaking every safety system that we have in case an emergency happens because it would get their stuff wet. Well, the emergency has come and there are no sprinklers and there are no fire alarms and there are no fire exits and there is no fire department. There are no fire hydrants. All of those things were planned all of those things were put in place, but now when we go to use them, you will find a little note saying, screw you, this would have interfered with my business. And that's where we are now. That's what you see happening in the streets all around the world, because people <laughs> just think nothing uh, the fuller effect the dumber you are the smarter you think you are yeah I'm serious it's called the fuller effect the dumber you are the smarter you think you are the smarter you are the dumber you think you are because the dumber you are, the less you can imagine. The dumber you are, the easier it is for you to believe that you know everything that there is to know. Because what you imagine that there is to know is very small. The smarter you are, you realize how much there is to know and how little of it you actually understand. So you feel stupid. It's true. It's paradoxical, but true. Stupid people think they're really, really smart. And smart people think they're really, really dumb. It is what it is. So, um... That's where we're going. Yeah, so uh, my concept of politics, data-driven world. Deal with reality. Deal with what's coming. Take your life and go and live in the equivalent of what you think the world is going to be in 10 to 20 years, just like in 200. Go get used to that now. Get into that environment now. Now. Find how the 47th percentile of the world is living and voluntarily put yourself into that situation now so that when the crap hits the fan and the world, and that becomes the world standard, and it really is the world standard, but I mean, when that becomes the world standard of the first worlders, 
you will not be in shock. Or, or go down as low as you can go. Go down as bad as you think it's going to get, right? Go down to the, uh, you know, 87th percentile of the world. People are surviving in these conditions now, so don't say it's impossible. The majority of the world is. Try it. Find out what life is like for the majority of the world and how they survive, how they have kids and raise families and move on to tomorrow because that world, that life is going to endure a lot longer than probably the life that you are living right now. That's what I see. And uh, that's how I live. And all of a sudden, people are thinking, you know, that, that actually sounds smart now. I thought you were a nut. I thought you were a nut before, but suddenly now, boom! I can see where you're coming from. Oh, well, okay, you can see it, but can you do it? We don't know. So that is why I don't really have political views because I look at politics as the gamification of the world. It's a whole bunch of morons who think they're smart due to the Fuller effect. Um, living in a fantasy world, that's over. It's already over. There you go. That's why I liked 40K. That's why really I don't have that much to say about politics because it's talking about how many angels can fit on the head of a pin. The entire thing is a joke. I live in the real world. That's my answer. I hope that wasn't disappointing. I hope you get a little better idea now as the primer when I start talking about more current events. If you have questions, now is the time to ask them below. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>